Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, <clears throat> good evening. My name is Master Paul, and I'm honored to be with you here today, the first day of March. It is a Wednesday, and I just completed a uh, chanting practice serving many students for their foundational energy centers. So I invite you to learn more about that as soon as you can. Um, today, we're focusing on how we can open our heart to love again. There is a, a smorgasbord of suffering for almost everyone that resonates with this message that when they read this title they go, oh I have to find out what this is. You know, um, you're probably not going to find too many men tuning in to this live stream today <clears throat> because their ego is too big. And you're going to find a lot of women tuning in because they have been harmed and their hearts have been hurt. Because women, generally speaking, have a much bigger open heart than men. That's not always true by any stretch of the imagination. But um, generally speaking, it is true. And so there is a great deal of value that can be learned from uh, what I'll be sharing with you today. Because a lot of it is based on the teachings uh, from my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah. But a great deal of it is also based on the wisdom and teachings that I've learned through my life and through programs that I've developed to assist people specifically with this particular blockage area, I guess is a good way to put it. So some of you may or may not know that I have a soulmate attraction system. I have a program that I've developed. It is a, a five-year-old program and I've had many clients and many successes. And so there is a lot that can be learned just connecting to those clients, just hearing their suffering, just hearing how their hearts have been closed, how they have tried again and again to open their hearts to love and they have not been able to receive it, uh, either from problems of their own, meaning blockages of their own, or from um, the wrong people coming into their lives. So opening our heart to love again has many, many possibilities, including um, opening our heart to love our parents again, or opening our heart to love um, our brother or sister, who we might be estranged from, our best friend. And it could, of course, be opening our heart to love in the form of a, of a beautiful relationship. But in either case, um, you will <coughs> receive value from what I'll be sharing with you today. So I'm grateful for this opportunity to connect with you. I see we've got quite a few people jumping in and joining at this time. And so I want to give you a little history of why I I'm, feel I'm, I'm educated enough to share this information with you. Um, I am over 50 at this point. I'm not going to give you the exact age. And during this time, I did not actually uh, open my heart to find true love until... Uh, about 50 and along those along that whole time I had to go through finding out why and in the finding out why I actually uh, learned a lot of it by assisting and blessing and helping others and so in developing my uh, soulmate attraction system program uh, I came across quite a few people that had closed hearts and I recognized that I may have one also since I hadn't found my soulmate yet and so I wanted to say, okay, well, what was it that can be learned here? And because of the intuitional abilities that I have received from opening my spiritual channels and training with Master Shah, because of my own ability to, to recognize a uh, closed heart, having had one, apparently, I was able to combine the two. And then I was able to apply the wisdom and teachings that Master Shah has brought about how to open the heart, how to open the heart center. What are the associated blockages that cause it, including the spiritual debt blockages from maybe us bringing harm or suffering to others in relationship in other times in our lives. And so this combination of <clears throat> spiritual wisdom along with real world suffering uh, brought about the, you know, the perfect storm, if you will, for the, uh, the highest and best environment to learn the wisdom, to apply what I had learned for myself and for others, and accordingly create an actual good and functioning program that really does work. And so I'll share with you a lot of tidbits along the way. 
And we will be doing a practice this today to assist you in, in opening your heart to love again. And I might even do a reading for one or two people as to the root cause at the spiritual level. And that could be uh, enlightening for a lot of us. Because remember, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's about a significant other. It could be the root cause of um, having difficulty with love with a brother or a sister. There could be a variety of reasons for it. So keep your mind open there. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, pause for a moment and acknowledge all those that have joined us. So welcome, Linda. Thank you for coming, tuning in earlier to the uh, Foundational Energy Practice. Welcome, Karen. Welcome, Sherry. Aloha, CJ. Aloha, Meg and Shakira. Welcome, Zoki. Aloha, Joyce. And Kristen Rojas, welcome. Petra, welcome, Dana. Aloha, Susan. Thank you also for joining the Foundational Energy Practices today. And welcome, Stephanie. Welcome, C. Welcome, Monica. Welcome. Uh, Elaine, welcome Deborah. Welcome Jennifer Caress Smith. Welcome Angie. And Aloha Richard. I was thinking of you earlier today, Richard. I was wondering how you were doing. It's so good to see you tuned in. Welcome Christina. And welcome Kayla. Welcome Kathy. So let's go ahead and connect first. <coughs> Let's place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. Left hand in front of the heart center, right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Close your eyes. Fully connect. Bring your thoughts and your breath into your lower abdomen. And I will begin. They're all beings serving the plan of the light side, including our beloved creator, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source. Dear the soul of all beings of light, including masters and ascendant masters, lamas, sifus, gurus and saints, angels, healing angels, archangels, dear beloved Jesus, dear beloved Mother Mary, dear beloved Buddha, dear beloved Kuan Yin, dear our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels and saints, we love you, honor you, appreciate you, respect you. We thank you most humbly for all that you do for all of our lives. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your unconditional love. We thank you for your guidance and your wisdom. We thank you for being around us and supporting us through this life. We ask most humbly that you come to sit in each of our heart centers today and bless us in whatever way is most appropriate at this time. To, I ask that you also guide my thoughts, my words, and my communications uh, so that everybody who is watching this will get the greatest value that is most important for them to receive at this time. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, I love you, I honor you, deeply respect you. We ask that you please at this time turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to join us in chanting love, peace and harmony. Let us chant. For those that are new, receive the blessing. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Wo ai wo xin her ling. Wo ai tran ran lei. Wang ling rong her mu shi shang. Xiong ai ping an xie. Xiong ai ping an xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. 
love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Excuse me a moment while I get some water. Okay. So thank you for all those that are joining. I see some new folks joining as well. Um, also, welcome to Leona, welcome to uh, Lindsay, and welcome to Dan. <clears throat> so uh, for all those that are just joining, today's subject is how to open your heart to love again. And um, I have a, a rather large background in this, a lot of it from being in that position and from learning the tools how to accomplish this. Uh, and also I invite all of you, if you have not already, to please uh, hit the share button, let other people know about this. Thank you so much for doing that for me. So where do we begin? The best place to begin is a recognition of the nature of life, the nature of love. When we can identify the nature of life and love, we can identify why sometimes it feels like we're getting beat over the head by it, and why when we close down, uh, it occurs and how then can we open it back up so life in general from my perspective only one that I have chosen to adopt and accept you have no uh, I have no compunction or reasoning to change your perspectives or beliefs I simply share with you mine okay from my perspective uh, I have a, a belief that the soul lives forever and that we as a human vessel goes around and around and around and we have experiences and then start again and have experiences die start again and what is the purpose of this the purpose is a to experience uh, all the things that life has to offer all the things that uh, life can give us uh, from my understanding we rarely go through the same um, uh, processes again things are set up for us by our own soul that allows us to have new sets of experiences and clean up old things that are not serving us so uh, in a generalized sense and many of you have heard this we create spiritual virtue and spiritual debt through our thoughts words and actions through all of our lifetimes of activities and those are the precursors to what happens in this life because we very often don't remember that we end up going through quite a bit of suffering and so when our heart is closed and we can't seem to find a way to open it very often it's rooted in this basic understanding because we want most of us want anyway to have an open heart we want to love again or love at a higher level uh, but very often we're unable to reach or attain that layer and that level because of our own mud puddles that we find ourselves constantly wallowing in and they have uh, there are many of them you know we step from one puddle to the next uh, and just as things start to get better maybe something else whacks up upside the head you know raise your hand if that makes sense to you most of us can probably say yeah that happens to me a lot and so how do we uh, stop that ball from rolling in the direction we're not enjoying and move it in the direction we want to. <clears throat> the key is to recognize, first of all, that um, life is not out of our control. A great deal of us go through life with uh, teachings that have been taught to us by our parents, by our peers, by the various belief systems that are out there that and it may have served you for a long period of time but if you're watching this that means at least on some level your spiritual awakening is greater than it was a few years ago and so often the the parent peer and belief system teachings teach us that the power is outside of us that the change is outside of us that we have to ask for and look outside of us for uh, change and shift and and and, and movement and uh, that's the farthest from the truth that I've chosen to to recognize and validated out so I have literally done a great deal of <clears throat> application of actual practice and actual effort to open my heart uh, to love and love again <clears throat> and so uh, again I speak part from experience but mostly from the wisdom and teachings that have been brought to me by my teacher Master Shah so in his foundational teachings he would say that everyone and everything has a soul and that we are all one and the purpose of every soul is to serve 
<clears throat> so why is it that when you have a relationship experience that has caused our hearts to close, that um, how is it that that soul, that other person, is serving me? You know, if every soul is to serve, why are they such a jerk? If every soul is to serve, why did my sister, who I love so dearly, all of a sudden become so distant from me? If everything is to serve, why is it that um, I cannot open my heart again to love someone? And so part and parcel of that answer is a recognition that <clears throat> we, although we are souls, all of us, we have personalities. And unfortunately, many of our personalities tend to rub up against each other and create uh, havoc. <clears throat> the reason that, that the, the rubbing is not so comfortable is because we have developed a personality based on what we believe, based on what we thought to be true and accurate, and based on what has served us well so far up to this point in our life. We develop this personality, this ego, if you will, so that we have our strength. We have to have a strength. You know, we have to be able to roll our shoulders back and, and, and at least do our best to plow through this life, however it's whacking us upside the head. And therefore, the personality and the ego has its merit and its value. We are a culmination of everything we've ever learned from the moment of birth. But that culmination is as a result of the karmic conditions prior to our birth. In other words, all of our spiritual virtue that brings us great relationships, great financial blessings, great uh, uh, friendships, great everything, that's called spiritual virtue. Spiritual debt, on the other hand, <clears throat> brings us conditions where our heart gets closed, brings us conditions where it's hard to reopen our heart. That's a spiritual debt blockage. And those are literally the precursors to your entrance into this experience. And they create the structures such as who your parents are going to be, what belief system you're going to be taught, uh, who your brothers and sisters are, <clears throat> well, even who your teachers are through the course of life. Those then formulate the conditions for which you are to learn from, for which you are to grow from, and become more love from. Yesterday, there was some very depthful teachings on the nature of the spiritual journey. And a great deal of that wisdom can be tied into this. Kind of hard to put it in a nutshell, but basically if I was to try to accomplish that in under two minutes, it would be a recognition that everything that happens is an opportunity, not a problem. And if we can view it through the eyes of an opportunity, we can move through and transform whatever that is much, much faster. That same wisdom applies to this subject of opening our heart. The ability to open our heart requires us to recognize that all of the suffering that has ever happened to us in all time, we have to take some responsibility for that. That means the, the unpleasantness that we have with that sibling. That means the, uh, the um, sexual misconduct that we may have experienced. That means the, um, the inability to find that person that actually treats you with respect and communicates with you and stays up at night and gets up with you when you get up and, and all those wonderful things that we all wish we could have. All those things that we haven't had, there is a root cause for those. So in my uh, uh, Soulmate Attraction program, um, some of the wisdom that I try to share with people is that we have a consciousness and we have an unconsciousness and they both have a pulse. Our conscious pulse is our ego-based pulse. <clears throat> it is built upon everything that we've ever accepted as truth. It is built upon all of our adjustments and readjustments that we make at the conscious physical mind level. So that includes um, you have an unpleasant relationship and or a spouse, uh, excuse me, a, a sibling or somebody like that. Uh, we have a falling out. And we go into our justifications, we go into our judgments, our criticisms, we go into our validations that I'm right, you're wrong. We go through all of these processes to prop ourselves up so we can, you know, keep our trousers on and keep going to work and, and show that smiley face to everybody. Um, but in reality, we're in pain. And it sucks to be in pain. And the pain is because we opened our heart with love and something transpired that shattered 
our expectations and shattered our、uh, beliefs of what it should be like, of what we hoped it would be like, of what our、um, intentions were, what the promises were made to us was, and every time we go through a process of, of remembering that, which happens for a lot of us, that keeps the heart closed that much more. So what in essence we're doing is we're recircling the ego stuff, or recircling the validation stuff, or recircling the I'm right, you're wrong stuff, or recircling I'm the victim, you're the victimizer stuff. This recircling is not serving us, obviously, and it's keeping our heart in a closed place. Okay, so raise your hand if that makes sense to you guys. Anybody if that makes sense? Do you find yourself circling? Do you find yourself being the victim? Do you find yourself <coughs> validating everything out? Uh, trying to do your best, but nothing necessarily is working for you. Okay, and so again, it does boil down to responsibility by recognizing the bigger picture. Ah, wow! So what you're telling me is my mom and my dad that at the soul level I chose them, and that that you know them teaching me these ways or 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 communicating me with this way. Or being emotional towards me this way, or being improper sexually towards me this way, or whatever it was, that actually was part of my spiritual debt and spiritual virtue conditions. Yes, same thing for that unpleasant last relationship you can think of, and everything that's ever happened in your life. I apologize that the majority of my communications focus on the unpleasant side, so that we can get to the good part, how to fix it. I'm going to have to do more live streams focusing on the positive stuff, and how we can have more of that.、Uh, mental note to 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 myself,、um, but it serves the purpose in in identifying、um, the roots. We have to recognize the roots. <clears throat> the roots were planted before you came into this experience, guys, and they must be uprooted. You cannot uproot the negativity. That showed up in your life that has brought these not so pleasant experiences to you until you can see it. Then you can start the uprooting process. So, when we、uh, when we desperately want to open our heart to find love again, or if our heart is open and we can't find love again, or love for the first time, there is. Uh, imbalance in the conscious and unconscious processes going on. Okay, the conscious process, the way I think, the way I believe, the way、um, the way I hope and trust,、um, what I've been taught.、Um, it includes the conscious process includes the adjustments. Well, obviously, this last person or my sister thinks this and this and that way. And I am never going to attract that kind of condition to me again. So I'm going to write down everything that I'm going to make sure I get this time, and I'm going to write down all my definitely don't want those. Right? So you got your list, and those are all part of the conscious process. The conscious process, however, doesn't change the underlying pulse. Which is, I use the term unconscious because we understand that in this modern world, in this human-based world that has psychology and all that. But in the, in a different term, instead of the unconscious process, is the underlying magnetic pulse of your karmic spiritual debt. I don't know how to say that shorter yet. I'm working on that. But we have an underlying pulse, and it makes choices and decisions for us. It has a stronger magnetic attraction than our conscious pulse, and it applies in every area of your life. It applies with your finances. You want. You wish you visualize that 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 million dollar lottery. You visualize that job. Blah 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 blah, but it doesn't happen. Why? Underlying magnetic pulse is stronger. The spiritual debt, the karma underlying, has not been addressed at the level of source. The root is still there. Okay, and so the same wisdom applies when you are wanting to open your heart to love. When you're trying to find your soulmate, you're trying to improve 
your existing relationships. Raise your hand if you want to improve your existing relationships. Go back to my video last week on relationships, okay? There was the most powerful wisdom on that. Don't miss that one. It was so good. So, um, finding the root cause. Karen says, how can I find the root cause? Finding any root cause is actually extraordinarily simple. We simply look at, we just point our finger right on the spotlight on the core of our suffering that is also the root cause because the core of our suffering is someone leaves us every time no matter what we open our heart they leave us we open our heart they leave us we open our heart they leave us what's the root cause we have opened our heart or we have opened up we have went to somebody else created a love situation they opened their heart we left them that's the root cause that's a simple example okay if it's a, if it's a, a sexual uh, imbalance that's the root cause if it is a I always attract angry people to me that's the root cause okay it's very easy actually to identify the root that created the underlying pulse that is the uh, spiritual debt that constantly pulses out the signal to inhibit you from having what it is that you're wanting because suffering was created for others. Therefore, the opportunity to fix that is present. Yesterday's wisdom teaching was on the nature of the spiritual journey. And a chunk of that wisdom was on turning things into an opportunity. So you cry to your girlfriends, you cry to your guy friends that you just can't uh, find love that no matter what you do you can't open your heart that it just feels like everything is depressive and 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 just you know not life is gone what is the root of that if you're depressed and you feel like there's nothing else you can do that means that those kinds of conditions have been brought upon others try to go into those moments however they show yourself that's where that root is and so most of us don't come in with a closed heart it's exceedingly rare for a baby to have a closed heart right they're they're they're, they're just little bundles of joy it is life that creates the closed heart scenario and it is the precursor of the spiritual debt that created the life that created the closed heart scenario. And so we want to employ the solutions now that we're able to identify those roots. And we want to reverse the magnetic pulse wherever it's blocking us at. In this case, in opening your heart. So how do we reverse the magnetic pulse? We apply aspects of the wisdom and teachings that Master Shah has brought to us. He brings uh, significant, significant power in the transmissions in his soul songs, but he brings the four powers, body power, mind power, sound power, soul power. And it is the soul power that assists us with the unwinding of the soul-related blockage. Because all of these are soul-related blockages. All of our virtue, which brings us wonderful soul-based experiences in this life, and all of our spiritual debt, which brings us the unpleasant ones that we tend to put our focus on, those are soul-based blockages. We must address them from that perspective, from that level, using those tools. And that is why Master Shah is such an amazing being and servant to humanity, because he brings the highest level of wisdom to transfer things at the root because the root sits on your Akashic record at your level of soul. That's where all of the roots sit. So we must address them there. We will address them, of course, with love. We will address them, of course, with forgiveness. But we can also address them with mantra. We can also ask the beings of light that have been called forth to assist us with releasing those blockages. We can ask any of the blessings that are in Master Shah's books 
including, for example, the newest one, the soul over matter. And here he has the uh, greatest love calligraphy, which is blessed with extraordinary love frequencies. And if we want to open our heart to love again, it requires us to forgive. Um, Master Shah's one sentence secret is, forgiveness brings inner peace and inner joy. Now, I really want you to say that to yourself and grasp the, the words. Forgiveness is not just a word, guys. It's not just a cursory action. It literally brings inner peace. Think about the last time you did an authentic forgiveness where you truly forgave that best friend or that whoever it was and it was like this huge weight came off your chest and your shoulders and you just felt so freaking relieved that that's finally not dragging you down anymore. You remember that release? At least once in your life, I'm sure you have had that kind of a release from that kind of a forgiveness. Forgiveness brings inner peace and inner joy. Why could a heart be closed? Why is it hard to open our heart to love again? Because we have been hurt. Simple. How do we fix it? Sorry to tell you forgiveness. But how can I possibly forgive that SOB, I'm not allowed to say what that means, for what they did to me? How can I possibly forgive my brother, my sister, my mother, my father for what they did to me? I am the victim. I like this role. I have power in this role. It supports me and my ego. It helps me to maintain my strength. In fact, if they weren't the way they were, I wouldn't have done this and this and this to make myself so much stronger. We often get strong because we have been harmed by those outside of us. There are many, many souls who refuse ever to be victimized again because they were a victim once before. And they say that they have forgiven that person sometimes, and maybe they truly have. But a lot of them use that as their pulpit to stand up and raise their fists and say, never again. That's part of the conscious pulse. It doesn't change the unconscious magnetic pulse that is still running that brought it to you in the first place. Do you get it? So as we awaken to this truth, we must recognize that the souls that came to us, that brought us the experiences, that caused us to close our heart, are not our enemy. They are not the ones that we need to be shaking our fist at. They are not the ones that we need to, to shove off in the corner of the brain and forget about them and think that we're actually benefiting our soul journey. They are not the ones that are in the wrong. They have their soul journey. We have ours. If we metaphorically hold our hands on that prison bar from inside our own prison cell, yelling at them for what they did and remaining the victim, we're still going to remain on our prison cell. They're out there doing whatever they're doing. They could give a hoot. They could care less about your perspective, your ego, or anything else. They don't care. If we chat with them and their heart is open and they recognize their errors, great. They do care. But if we are still in our space, certainly nobody's a winner. So it begins by recognizing that our, um, our holding on is serving our, our ego. It is serving um, a lack of learning. It is disallowing the opportunity for transformation at the highest level. You can choose to remain right. You can choose to feel the victim of whoever it was that caused your heart to become closed. And you're going to be right by choosing that. But it will not release the entirety of the root causes. It simply will not 
bring about the highest and best conditions for you as you move forward. It won't. I recognize truly how difficult it can be to offer forgiveness when we've had such a traumatic experience. When that quote SOB rakes us over the coals, takes all the money, takes the house, whatever it is, I'm sure you could fill a book with the suffering that you went through. I could fill an entire hour telling you about the suffering I had with my relationship. But it's just conscious level stuff that is not serving me, certainly not serving you. So let us let go of the story. Let us let go of the drama, of the need to share it with our best friends, our girlfriends, our guy friends, the need to revalidate it over and over and over again because that simply energizes the underlying magnetic pulse. It simply says to heaven, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in learning this opportunity to permanently release this spiritual debt. I'm not interested in recognizing that I might have caused this kind of suffering upon others. I'm sorry, heaven. Thank you for bringing these conditions to me in this life, but I'm just, I, I prefer to stay with my ego and choose this route because it helps to support me, my self-righteousness. Sometimes it's hard to hear that, and I, I apologize if it hurts as a deliverer of that. But if you truly want to open your heart, if you truly want to allow yourself to love again, these are the changes that need to be made. Now, let's imagine you make these changes and you open your heart and love comes back, either with a significant other, a sibling, whoever it might be. And then, Trauma comes back because they said a lie and it triggers the lie that you heard from the spouse the last 20 times that led to the unpleasant divorce. Or you're with somebody and you're communicating with them and your heart is open and they say something like, why do you even do that? It's just useless to do that. And it triggers uh, ancient pain from your mother or your father saying that, which caused you to close your heart. And so then you start closing your heart to the spouse that triggers that. We take a risk when we open our heart that it can be shut down again. But in that verbiage that it can be shut down again, that is the, that is the lack of taking responsibility. That is being the victim. That is... Um, not being current to that space and going, I am feeling a pain response to this comment, to this action, to this word. This is once your heart is open again, okay? And I can choose to go into my defensive posturing and say I'm right and close my heart more and feel that they don't understand me and blah, 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 which is patternistic stuff. Or I can express, when I heard you say this, I know maybe you didn't mean to cause any, any harm or suffering. I'm not saying that you caused my suffering. I'm saying that I had an emotion. And I prefer not to shove this down. I prefer not to close my heart to you. I'd like to walk this through because I don't believe in you saying this. Your intention was to bring harm to me or to shut me down. This is a conscious conversation that can occur with that individual or if something happens that that individual is not in front of you that causes you to want to close your heart, you go through the same self-love process. I choose not to close my heart based on this gossip that I heard from this person about me. I choose to keep my love open. I choose to communicate, to, I choose to communicate as best as possible. Um, with the soul of this person or with them directly and if I'm unable to get this resolved then I will continue to love myself and not close my heart but I may distance myself from this person if we cannot come to an amicable resolve that allows us to both stay in love okay in this way you're honoring your heart you're not allowing circumstances outside of you to to drag you down or close your heart 
you have to be self-responsible for your heart. We, so, because we grow up placing responsibility outside of us, seeing that, it's, that we're the victim, that everything happens to us, or that they did this to me, whatever, whoever they are, we're not taking a, a great deal of responsibility at that time. Now, it's important to, to do this communication to self or to others with a loving heart. Let them know, hey, it's, I'm not saying you did this to me. I'm saying this is what I'm feeling. And I would like to not feel that, so can, let us communicate about this. You can have some great results in this way. And you can maintain your open heart. You must always remember that just because you process through the releasing of whatever suffering you've been through and you reopen your heart to love again, it doesn't mean that all of the spiritual debt that brought it to you is completed, washed away, and the underlying magnetic pulse is cleaned up and you're ready to go forever free of problems. Definitely not. You will be giving other opportunities moving forward to maintain an open heart, to identify areas when you get hurt where you can say, I now recognize that this is a root, that I may have created this suffering upon another. So I will do a forgiveness practice around this and I will not let this root grow. I will see it for exactly what it is and I will continue releasing these underlying debts in my magnetic pulse so I can maintain the highest love for self and in sharing with others. Before we do our practice, I want to, to make one final very important statement. In my... Um, get a drink of water first, excuse me. In my Soulmate Attraction program, I, I received a huge aha moment. It took almost a year of, of working with myself and others before this lightning bolt of aha came. And if you can grasp this, it will rock your world. It is simple, not so easy to accomplish, but it will create the best relationships in all of your relationships forever. It will open your heart 100%. Okay? So here it is. The reason we have relationships, all of them, that have uh, suffering and indifferentials is because of our separation of our original love with our original creator. So follow me through on this. We'll use a romantic relationship as an example. So we go into a romantic relationship and we have, the great majority of us, I would say somewhere between 97 and 98%, have been taught that we give ourselves to that relationship. We do whatever it takes to make the relationship work. We give all of our love. Now, that just sounds logical. That's what we've been taught. It's, it's worked so far, sort of, kind of. And yet we end up very often with divorce and pain and suffering and a closed heart. Why do we close our heart and end up with pain and suffering? Because of that initial wrong teaching. The initial wrong teaching to give all of ourselves to the other is incorrect teaching. This was my great aha moment. Because when we have that belief and that perspective, what comes with it, there's two answers to this, what comes with it is an assumption and an expectation that they will do the same for us. And when that expectation is not met, we set ourselves up for hurt. We set ourselves up for our hearts to be closed. We set ourselves up for a constant layering of failure in relationship. We have expectations that our kids will do and be a certain way. Why? Because that's what we were taught by our parents. And when they don't, we're hurt. We maybe even lay blame on them or guilt on some level. And therefore we impact them and we re reproduce this through our family. The solution is filling our heart 
our love from our Creator Source. Now, I, I've already said, not the easiest thing to accomplish. I'll give you the hows in a minute. But why is that the solution? When we fill our heart with the Creator's love, and we bring no expectation of those around us to fulfill our heart, to fulfill our love, then we have unlimited love to give because we're giving not to receive. We're giving because we have unlimited love to give. If they are in pain or in suffering, if they are angry at us, we can be in a quiet and calm and compassionate place. We can be the open heart that we all desire to be. But our hearts, the vast majority of humanity, is half full. And that empty part of our closed hearts, we are trying desperately to fulfill it from everything except our beloved Creator. And it is in this false teaching that the vast majority of us have adopted and accepted where we continually fail, where we continually uh, carry regrets. We simply cannot fill our hearts from outside of us and to put the onus of anybody doesn't matter if our children, parents, brothers, sisters, or lovers. If we put the onus on them to fulfill our hearts, we set the entirety of our experience up for pain. This is what creates closed hearts. This is what creates the conditions where it makes it difficult to reopen our heart. So there's a lot of gems here. There's a lot of, 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 of aha moments built into this wisdom. How do we reverse this? How do we open our hearts and not let it happen again? We fill our hearts with the Divine's love. How do we make room for this? Because everyone watching this, every soul wants to realign their heart to the Divine. They want, more than anything, our Creator's love. And every one of our physical world actions try to get that, but we try to get it from those physical areas outside of us. So how do we get it from the core of it itself? It starts with recognizing a truth at a deeper level. Recognizing that your Creator is in every speck of every energy and matter that makes up your DNA, that makes up your cells, that makes up your protons, your atoms, your organs, your systems, your cell. It makes up you. Your Creator is in you. There is not one part of you that your Creator does not simply glow in. Why are we so separate from that truth? Ego which was formed from our upbringing that our spiritual virtue and spiritual debt brought us. So we come into this world with our spiritual debt and spiritual virtue and the knowingness of this truth. And then we start forming our personalities with the lack of this memory. We then create a life experiences, many, many pleasant, many, many suffering, and our hearts are in varying degrees of open or closedness. In order to go back, we must literally attune ourselves to the truth that Creator is and has always been with us and in us. That's probably acceptable. Now, can you accept that the Creator's love is 100%? That the Creator would not cut off his left arm and say, I hate you, you are useless, you are, uh, uh, you are ugly, you are fat, you are this, you are that, you can never do anything right. Do you think your creator would do that? Cut off his left arm and say, you have all these faults, I cut you off. But I love you, the right arm, you have this and this and this and this and that. No, of course not. Our beloved creator who is in us, in every speck, 100%,
has 100% love for us. There is not a speck that is in us that is not carrying the Creator's love. Why can't we attune to that? It is our spiritual debt. It is our lack of forgiveness. Yesterday I spoke about a true story, and the synopsis is this. A psychologist opened up the file of the most heinous criminals in his ward, the kind where nobody wanted to work, nobody would even go see them. He never talked to them once, and he looked at all of their problems from the moment of birth and all of the, th all of the heinous things they've done, and with each line that he read, he said, Please forgive me. I love you. He said it to the, the paper, to the words, for that particular criminal. He didn't speak to them. And he said, please forgive me. I love you. And all, all of the criminals in that ward left on good terms. They had released the entirety of their pain and suffering. And they, uh, the, the, literally the prison closed, it closed down because there was no one else to keep there. It was for the hardest of the hardest. If that can happen from, please forgive me, I love you, then <clears throat> why is it that we want to hold on to the suffering of what that person did to me? I am right, they are wrong. Why is that the wisest choice for us when we can see the power of love and forgiveness? When we apply this simple teaching, we can receive the divine's love that has always and forever been there. It is shaded, shadowed, and covered up by our own personality stuff, by our own spiritual debts, by our own perspectives, mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. The worst culprit is the self-love issues. The worst culprit is when we poo-poo on ourselves. If God is you, you are God. Creator is you, you are Creator. Sorry, I don't want to irritate anybody by saying the word God. Uh, it's just a word that represents the entirety of our creation. If God is in you, you are in God. If Creator is in you, you are in Creator. What are you saying to the Creator? You're useless, Creator. Why do you even think that way? You know, when we say that kind of stuff to ourselves, who, who are you saying it to? Are you helping yourself? Are you releasing the blockages and the underlying magnetic pulse? Is it opening your heart? Reconnecting to our beloved Creator can happen in meditation, and we can clear these blockages that are referred to as Shen, Qi, and Jing blockages, soul heart, mind, energy, and matter blockages because our Creator is, we are from the Creator's soul. So we have soul. We have heart blockages, which are greed, selfishness, jealousies, guilt. Those are heart blockages. We have mind blockages, mindsets, attitudes, beliefs. And we have energy and matter blockages. All of these Shen Qi Jing blockages are what inhibit us from opening our heart, reconnecting to our Creator. Receiving the 100% love from that source, which then allows us to be a beacon of light to all those around us and not feel any drain, not have any uh, expectations to fulfill it from the outside. We want to apply Master Shah's wisdom and teachings. We do forgiveness, of course. We do, uh, we, and we want to bring the higher frequencies of love into our world. How can you change your lack of love with your own love? Cannot. You have, to, you have to get the divine help. There's no way around it. You have to go outside of yourself to a higher source, your creator source. Now, there are many uh, amazing beings that our beloved creator has brought to us. You know, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Buddha and Kuan Yin, so many more. I, I, I can't even name them all. Uh, so many saints, and masters, and ascended masters, many, many angels, archangels, and Michael. And they all are here to serve us. They are all beings of light that have gotten to their level of soul standing because they have went through what you're going through and they have risen and 
they understand that in order to get there, love is the most important thing. And so they're happy to come when you call them. Just because your spiritual third eye is not open does not mean uh, uh, they are not there. The moment you ask them to be there, <coughs> uh, they are 100% there. The moment you ask them to be there, under any condition, they are there. But our ability to see them, our ability to feel them, is related to our Shen Qi Jing blockages. Not because they don't love us or because uh, uh, whatever thing you've made up. Okay, they're there. Our frequency does not allow us to see them. Literally, science can measure the, the range, visually speaking, that the human eye sees this range and this range. Can you see a cell phone signal? No. Does it work? Of course. It is something that vibrates. You vibrate, your cells vibrate, everything vibrates, basic science, everything vibrates. Cell phone signals vibrate, you vibrate, but your eyes can only see this range. Angels are higher than that range. Does that mean they're not there? Of course not. So we must re realign ourselves to the heart of the divine. So we're going to apply a practice now. <clears throat> this is one very powerful tool that it can assist you. This uh, calligraphy is in multiple books, including this newer one, Soul Over Matter. It's in Master Shah's Soul Healing Miracle book. It is in a new book that will be coming out shortly called Da Ai, The Greatest Love. The calligraphy is called The Greatest Love. And it is one method through which this teacher, Master Shah, has put power into. There are great beings that have come to humanity. Uh, Jesus obviously is one of them. Buddha is obviously one of them. There are more modern beings. Dalai Lama is a great being. He brings this incredible sage wisdom. The Dalai Lama was given the heart of the wisdom to help humanity to awaken with very uh, poignant uh, expressions. Master Shah, he's not the Dalai Lama, but he, was, uh, he has dedicated his life to serve since the age of four, and he has proven that through all of his services, and he has been given a different set of values by our Creator. He has been given the ability to put power into objects and things. The divine power, so that the divine power, which is a much higher love than yours and mine, can assist us in raising and elevating our frequencies. Okay? <clears throat> and so, yes, Susan, they are in his cards. So, uh, Da I is what this is. All right? So I will do this service on your behalf. I can't hold up the book the whole time for you to trace. But you are going to do the four powers with me, and I am going to assist you with clearing some of your Shin Qi Jing blockages. So first we're going to choose either a vague request, which is okay, or a specific person that you need to clear some blockages with associated with your heart not being open enough. So you choose, I just want to open my heart more, or uh, if, you, if there's a specific person that you know has contributed to the closing of your heart, then say, dear the soul of this person, please come to this practice. So go ahead and do that now. <coughs> All right. We're going to do a forgiveness practice first. It's going to be somewhat generalized because everyone has a different thing they're working with. But if it feels comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear all, dear divine, dear the source, my creator, my name is, state your name three times, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. I love you with all my heart. I truly wish to feel your love 100%. I truly wish to open my heart as much as possible and at the same time not be hurt. I know that if I put my total focus to receiving your love that it would be impossible for me to be hurt. I know this because I would no longer be having expectations for others to fulfill my love. Please, my beloved Creator, bless me to release my blockages, open my heart, forgive others, 
and forgive myself for any unpleasant things that have occurred. Continue to repeat. Dear all souls of humanity and beyond, <clears throat> if I have ever said any words that have caused you to close your heart, if I have ever thought any thoughts that have caused you to, to wonder about my integrity, if I have ever made any actions that have caused you to close your heart and move away from love, if I have done any thoughts, words, and actions of any kind that has created a situation where you have not been able to open your heart more and receive love, from the bottom of my heart, I deeply and sincerely apologize. <clears throat> if there is an individual soul that you have called forth, you would say, Dear this soul, please forgive me if I have done the things that I have experienced in our relationship to you in any time. If I have done this, that, whatever it is, you know how you suffered. If I have done these to you, please forgive me. I deeply, most humbly, most sincerely apologize. I now know that I have created expectations in the relationship for it to go a certain way and that I had put requirements upon you to fulfill my love and I have been blaming you for closing my heart and hurting my heart and I release you of this responsibility I release you of any spiritual debt that we may have together I do not wish to have this experience ever again and if I have brought harm and suffering to you for all of these things I ask most humbly for your forgiveness and I offer you my unconditional forgiveness. Now, continue to repeat. Dear the soul of the greatest love, the greatest love calligraphy, the countless blessings transmitted to this very special calligraphy. Could you please come to my heart, to my message center, to my mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, ego, and attachments? Could you please come to release as much as possible my blockages that I can open my heart and realign my heart to my beloved Creator? I am very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So with your eyes closed, you may visualize a special deity in your heart center. You can visualize God coming to your heart center, Jesus coming to your heart center, whoever you want. Visualize them coming into your heart center, glowing their brightest light. And they are chanting right along with you as I chant on your behalf. Dai 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 I'm tracing the calligraphy for you Dai 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 Greatest love Unconditional love melts all blockages, opens my heart and soul. Die, die, opens my heart and soul. Die. I die, I open 
Cleans my heart and soul. Greatest love, greatest love, melts my mindset's attitudes, releases ego attachments. Die, die, opens my heart and soul. Da I die, I opens my heart and soul. Greatest love, greatest light releases negative thinking, releases guilt and shame. Thy greatest love releases self hurt, releases self anger, releases lack of self love. Thy die. Greatest love, I die, I, greatest light and love. <clears throat> Please bless my heart and soul. Please align my heart and soul. Bless me to remember. The divine is inside of me. Please bless my heart and soul. Align my heart and soul. Open my heart and soul. I am so very grateful. Die, die, opens my heart and soul. <clears throat> die, die, opens my heart and soul. And as the calligraphy and all the beings of light continue to bless you, visualize this most incredible radiation of light starting in a billion dots that make up all of the protons that are throughout your body. They are becoming specks of light. That is your creator's light that is finally and for the first time being seen and they are getting brighter and they are creating enough light to start to fill up the atoms that are inside of your cells and billions upon trillions of atoms now are vibrating and bouncing off each other with this brilliant light in the center of your heart is one solid light but your whole body has these trillions of little bitty lights and they're getting brighter and brighter and the cells that your atoms are in there are trillions of atoms inside of your cells and they're getting brighter and brighter to the point where your cells become solid and bright and the hundred trillion cells in your brain are now glowing bright light. There is still space between all these cells because the space has not received the light yet. But you can see trillions of cells all over your whole body with the space between them that is beckoning for the light. <clears throat> and you see now that the cells are communicating their greatest love with each other, that your Creator's greatest love 
is emanating through the protons, through the atoms, through the cells, which are radiating into the space between the cells. And as the space between the cells starts to feel brighter and brighter, your organs, your systems, your skin, your hair on top of your head is glowing this golden, bright, divine light. This highest divine light that has always been in you has always been present, is now radiating, and you're starting to see your actual physical body start to become faded a little because the light is getting so bright. How bright is the Divine Creator's light? How bright can that light become? Are you starting to fully disappear? Are you starting to become one in the entirety with the light of the Creator that has forever been inside of you? You are always and forever the pure 100% love of the Creator. You are always and forever the pure, 100% love of the Creator. You are always and forever and have always been the pure, 100% love that is the Creator. Now expand that love to other souls, to those in your home, their souls turn their heads. Wow, what is that love? What is that light? And their protons in their bodies start glowing and dancing. And their cells and atoms start glowing and dancing. There are countless, countless cells glowing and dancing. And their love is starting to be reminded inside their bodies. And now see this radiated love coming from you and them and is starting to affect your neighbors and all around you going down the street. Hundreds of heads are turning and the protons and atoms and cells in their body are turning into love, turning into light, turning into the original source that they are. Their souls are sending you the greatest love and gratitude and forgiveness because this oneness that they are awakening to because you sent your love to them, this oneness they are awakening to is reminding them that they are also pure love, pure creator inside their every being. They are so grateful. See this light awakening all the souls of humanity like a cascade of domino effect going around the world. Little flickers of light turning on in everyone like little fireflies, millions of them in everybody's body around the world awakening and your love is what initiated this. You have the power to heal yourself. You have the power to awaken others through your realignment to the love that has always been in you. Now say to your beloved Creator, Dear my beloved Creator, I am so honored that you and I are truly one. I am so honored to receive your blessings. I am so grateful to open my heart once again and to have your love be the only love that fulfills my heart. That when I receive love from others, I choose 
to accept it and offer it to you in gratitude. And in this way, I am receiving and I am giving. Thank you, my beloved Creator, for this incredible, incredible gift of awakening. I am so very, very, very grateful. And bow your head nine times to your beloved Divine Creator, offering your deepest gratitude, your most sincere appreciation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Countless bow downs, my beloved Creator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So it might take you a little while to wake up from this one. Very, 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 very powerful. The light was extraordinary with this blessing. I want you all to be aware that you can expedite opening of your heart by receiving a crown chakra blessing. You can receive a calligraphy card like this one that is specific to this da I, the greatest love. And on your breaks or when you have time, you just trace it. Please open my heart. Please open my heart. This gives you total control of opening your heart more and more. It's a self-cleansing, self-clearing vehicle. Um, the crown chakra blessings wash away the negative self-talk the lack of love for self that disallows heaven to come to you, disallows the light to be seen. You could receive even higher blessings for opening your heart and soul and block out with a light wall protection all that is trying to keep you from opening your heart. If these kinds of services, very special services, are of interest to you, I'm happy to serve you. These cards, priceless. I keep mine, you know, on my body at all times. Um, these are just released only a few weeks ago. They're very, very rare. Um, they are $100, small price to pay for something that literally self-clears your karma and helps you to keep and open your heart. And on top of that, you can use it to bless others. You can use it to bless your children. You can use it to bless uh, your loved ones, to bless a relationship blockage issue itself. Uh, you can use it to bring healing to those that you care about. It is an extraordinary uh, vessel to accomplish that. So I'm so grateful for this opportunity to serve you today. <clears throat> my name is Master Paul. You can reach me. Uh, my phone number is 808-469-6199 in the U.S. You can call me uh, through Facebook Messenger. That's a free app, and it's also really good and responsive. I'm able to connect with you right away if you have any questions or you'd like to receive any of these services. If you came in late, do yourself the greatest service of watching it from the beginning. There was some tremendous, tremendous value uh, that can be learned, even from watching it again. If you have a good friends, people you care about, loved ones, that you believe can resonate with the wisdom that was shared today, please... Uh, share this video with them. You can right click on it and it'll give you a choice to copy the URL and you just plop that into uh, 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 their page or into um, uh, email, whatever you want to do. Uh, you could change their life. Okay. So uh, I'm very honored to serve you, very honored to connect with you. If you're interested in the Soulmate system, there's more information listed above my video. You can click on those links there. I will be back tomorrow I have no idea what heaven will guide me to teach, but I look forward to it. I call you all to come to the Foundational Energy Practices Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It is very powerful. It will assist you to move through and past energetic blockages, heart blockages. It will assist you in every area of your life more than you can imagine, and it's complimentary. If you're not familiar with where that's at, come to my page. You'll see the postings on it. And I'll be happy to serve you that way as well. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you to all the beings of light who come. Thank you to our Heavens teams. 
thank you to the Da Ai Calligraphy. Respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye bye, everybody.